Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this episode of the How to Play chess series, we will be covering the bishop. The bishop is another favourite piece for many. I actually have a different favourite, which I'm very excited to cover in a different video. But the bishop is a fantastic piece on the chessboard because it possesses one key attribute of the queen, and the queen's the most powerful piece. The bishop can move diagonally. I'll repeat that. The bishop can move diagonally. There are only a few pieces that can do this, so it's very exciting. And there are two of them. What you'll notice is that on this particular board position, there are two bishops per side, and they are always on two different um, square types. So when you start a chess game, you will have a bishop on the light squares or that covers the light squares and your other bishop will cover the dark squares. So now I'll show you exactly what I mean. So if we start with um, white's bishop or light squared bishop, this piece right here on c6 can move as many squares as it likes diagonally, provided that there are no pieces in its way. So it cannot move backwards because the king is in its way. But again, it can cover all of the light squares diagonally. And now if I look at white's dark squared bishop, again diagonally. So if you're on what is called a, a essentially the right diagonal or the best diagonal, you can move an incredibly far amount. So to give you an example, if for example this bishop right here, sorry, if I take a black bishop and I put it on h1, the black bishop, the light squared bishop, is now attacking the king all the way on b7 because it covers the whole diagonal, which makes it a very powerful piece when well positioned. So when you have bishops, try and place them somewhat in the middle or in positions where they can cover a high number of squares. So another thing to consider about bishops is if I just remove a few pieces now and I create a new board position. I want to show you something that's really quite interesting. Let's just say that black has a light squared bishop. Now I'm going to put my king on c3. Now at first you might look at this board position and say well there's actually not enough material to win in this particular position. If I go and add a pawn in, then different story. But what I want to show you is something that I've seen in several games, and it's a really horrible realization when you realize this. If white's king only moves on dark squares, then there is absolutely nothing that the light, um, the light squared bishop can actually do because oops sorry everyone so essentially what the light squared bishop wants to do is you want to attack the king and in this particular position there's also a pawn which could be eligible for promotion and then you'll get another piece but the point i'm trying to make here is that if white only moves to dark squares the Black's light squared bishop can never actually attack the king because the only thing it can do is it can only move on light squares. And this is something that you will, um, you will discover this when you play chess, that bishops when used together, bishops when, when used together can be incredibly, incredibly powerful. Now you can see that the dark squared bishop is attacking the king. And look, if the king now moves, if the king now moves here, it's under attack. If it moves here, it's under attack because the bishops are working together. And this is an incredibly powerful tactic that we'll talk more about in another video. So overall, 
remember that bishops can move diagonally as many squares as it can without anything in its way and in a, this kind of position ultimately it can be incredibly incredibly powerful when you can limit a number of squares that the king would ordinarily be able to move to. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.